Welcome to this week's edition of Mainly Motorsports. And yes, folks, he's alive and well. The Dirty Lou in the house. And uh, I'd say welcome to Mainly Motorsports, Lou, but you live Mainly Motorsports because of uh, pretty much every day or this season, this time of year, every day, we're in contact and you're living Mainly Motorsports with me, huh? I am. What have you any other way? Any other way. And uh, you were one of the first guys back when we took this thing over back in, I think, 2007, uh, jumped on board, learned how to run a camera. You still do it when you can, do it a lot, you know, and we still have fun with it, you know. But oh, yeah. It's a fun time doing that. Like one of all these shows. It was mainly motorsports night when uh, we always, we joke about it now because you're okay, but uh, the next day you had a stroke because the night before we were doing a bicycle built for two race, so we were doing a bicycle race. <laughs> And I got a bicycle built for two, and Louie did all the work. And next day, uh, you had a, I mean, I guess we could call it a minor stroke. I mean, Very minor, but yes. But still, and, uh, but you healed up. And uh, that's, first and foremost, that's good news for everybody, you know. Very good news. And I want to thank everybody for all the, that reached out to us over the winter and fall to help us out with everything they did and just seeing how we were doing, checking in on us. You know, because... You're a hardcore. You're as hardcore as they come when it comes to short track racing. You know you've been doing it now for what 30 years and uh, almost 35. Yeah, you, you never want to miss a race. You never want to miss a lap. You don't miss a practice. You don't want to miss nothing. And you were forced after this, even though at first you were going to try to figure out how you could do it. Oh yeah. But you were forced to 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 take the rest of the year off and uh, you know and that was hard. You know you were. In it a, was extremely hard. I was in a tight point battle down the Lee. Um, had a shot at the top. I don't know if I'd have gotten third or not, but definitely the top four or five down the lead and end up having to settle for six, missing two events. Um, but like you say, you got to put your health first. And that was definitely a hard pill to swallow because, like you say, I wanted to be there and just couldn't do it. And now you've turned into like a folk hero. You know, we go to the Derby. Everybody's expecting the Dirty Lou to be at the Derby. And even then, you know, there was talk. We were going to do it. We are going to do it. But just... You weren't back up to speed yet with no. everything you needed to be to be able um, to get behind the wheel of a race car. No, it was still too early. Um, and then, like I say, we're taking all the time off from work and the finances weren't there. So just everything combined, it was just better off to put it on hold for a season. But you're feeling much better now. I mean, I don't, you know, we spent a lot of time, especially this year with the with the winter and plowing and shoveling and everything. And, uh, you know, and I was thinking of it, uh, you know, this morning when I called you about coming on, I'm like, you know what, I haven't really seen any lasting effects. Everything's good. He's not really, you know, not complaining, but not, not even talking about any anything that's, you yeah. know. The uh, only lasting effect I really have is my left thumb. It comes and goes as far as the feeling in it goes. Um, grasping things is, is tough. Um, Got to get used to that again still, still but... I'm making adjustments. Comes and goes. Yeah, come, yeah, the feeling comes and goes in it. Um, like the hardest thing, really, honestly, to do with my thumb, opening a sandwich bag. Really? Yeah, opening my lunch is the, definitely the toughest thing. Grabbing that little plastic piece, trying to rope it open. Yeah, it's tough. Well, it's a good thing Sarah don't make him a lunch and send it to him because <laughs> the boy wouldn't eat. So thank God for fast. So Sarah, all that time you haven't been making little lunches. That was by a design. That was so, so he didn't take nothing away from him that he was so accustomed to. But uh, yeah. Uh, but if you do bring a lunch and you can't open the baggie, you know, I'll eat it. You know. Well, I'm sure you will. No, I you know what Debbie packs me. I ain't got room to eat yours and mine. But uh, yeah. But no, no we're doing all right. Um, it could be way worse. I keep telling myself that every day. Um, but I'm getting exercise as far as getting better. It's uh. Like I said, the only challenge I'm thinking now is that I've driven left-handed for 35 years in racing, and I had to put two hands on the wheel this year, which isn't a bad thing, I don't think. You heard it here, folks. Lou's going to put two hands on the wheel, so that means we're either going to have twice the excitement, or who knows. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we'll talk more about that throughout the show. But it, it, you know, yeah, that's uh, that had to be scary, though. It had to be scary for Sarah, the girls. Oh, and, I, you know, I, mean, I can't imagine what, what they were thinking and, and, and going through because it was scary for me. Um, I'm just glad that everybody stepped up and helped us out, and including you and Deb, and coming to the hospital to see us, and all the phone calls we received. And oh, that's a that's a I can't even imagine, you know, because we we joke about it all the time. We think we're invincible. I mean, we, we do. Older, you got a birthday okay. coming up, and yeah. uh, um, the big five zero in five zero this year. Yeah, that deserves a stripper. 
<laughs> right? Yeah. Or two? How many you want? <laughs> Whatever. Sarah don't watch. Sarah's not watching. How many you want? <laughs> you want a stripper? Sure, yeah, why not? All right. All right. Well, Sarah, if you tuned in, I need a little stripper. But uh, it's 5 0. So uh, 5 0. We'll add 20 to it. So I'll get him a 70 year old stripper. So, Jesus. Oh, yeah. If there's any 70 year olds out there looking to make a little extra cash. You know, oh, we're good. We're higher for the night, but uh, <laughs> wow, 50. You know, I, I mean, uh, as you're watching this episode, I just turned 54, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, we think we're invincible, but man, you know, it we, we do set us back. You know, it, that, I mean, you had the same scale, a uh, similar scale last year, yeah. and me this year, and it's like, wow, it's just who's next, Brick? <laughs> oh God, <laughs> what scale is he gonna have? Right? Oh, Jesus, well, who knows? But no, that's. That's good. We're going to spend some time with Lou today talking about, you know, uh, his racing history and his future plans. And uh, we'll have a lot of fun here today at Manly Motorsports. We're going to wrap up our Northeast Motorsports Expo um, as we move forward to Race and Preview 2020. And uh, we said, it's amazing know, it's 2020 already. Yeah, you've been doing these shows with me since I took them over, you know. And uh, yeah. I don't know. It's like me and you, you know what I mean? You know, me and, you know, we're up to Augusta, mapping the floor, we'll be in Portland and just I, I think about Portland. I was at Portland show before you were because I was doing it with Marco. Yeah, yeah. So you came with it. <laughs> yeah, you, you and Brett came with the show. Even though I already had Jeff, you came with the show. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it, it's like I said, it's a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun. We don't make a lot of money. We make some friends, make a few enemies. But uh, you know, I, I couldn't do all I do with the racing and then you know the race team and all, all that we try to do without having you with us, Lou. So uh, you got to stay healthy. You got to. You know, yeah. Stay away from them wild women. That's why I'm going to get you a 70 year old instead of a 20 year old. And uh, so I'm, I'm trying to help you. So we're going to take a break. When we come back. We're going to have some more interviews from the Northeast Motorsports Expo. Welcome to LST Landscaping, where we've been providing complete landscape solutions to all of Southern Maine since 1969. We specialize in year round landscape maintenance and snow services, including weekly lawn mowing, seasonal cleanups, sweeping, mulching, and so much more. Many more customizable services are available upon request. Please call our office today at 207-878-1578 or visit our website, lstlandscapinginc.com. I'm Melinda. My husband Steve and I operate eKeys for Cars in Saco. eKeys is family owned with over 20 years in the car key business. Need an extra key? We promise to provide the best quality at a good price. Walk-ins are always welcome with no appointment ever needed. You'll be in and out in minutes. And yes, E-Keys still handles emergencies. But why wait? E-Keys for Cars, Route 1 on the Auto Mile in Saco. E-Keys for Cars. Wiscasset Speedway is back, and we have the cure for your need for speed. Maine's biggest and fastest proudly presents eight featured divisions, including pro stocks, late models, four-cylinder pro stocks, modifieds, and more. Plus, special features throughout the season, including the Nell Car Legends, the Wicked Good Vintage Racers, the NEMA Midgets, Enduros, and more. All this fun, all this excitement, all for just five bucks. Wiscasset Speedway, west on the road, Wiscasset, online at Facebook and wiscassetspeedway.com. Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by LKQ Core. Any part, any repair, anywhere. Located on Route 202 in Gorham. Wiscasset Speedway, Maine's biggest and fastest, with $5 admission every weekend and loads of family fun. Check us out at wiscassetspeedway.com. Well, Bel- uh, Belcom, welcome back to Mainly Motors. Oh, flush it. Phone's ringing off the hook already. The girls are calling. So got, right now, we got an offer from an 83-year-old. Like, loose la, 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 la. But, uh, hey. Where do you find this? You can't walk them, wheel them. But, uh, no. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we had a good time once again up to the Augusta show. And uh, you and uh, Corey going around, Dan Walker doing some interviews. And uh, I'm going to finish up this week. And, uh we met some great people up there over the years, too, haven't we? We have. Yeah. You know. And uh, I tell you, the, them guys, are, for them, the displays are getting better and better every year, and which makes the show that much more special every year. Yeah, yeah. And I got to head to, head to sport the EJP today, and uh, Peter's a big supporter of us, and, uh, yeah. you know, has been. Great from day one, right? Day one with me, and, and, you know, he's the reason I got that show. And, um, but, yeah. And, um, 
But I'll tell you, one of the things I like to see, we talk about all the time, in the short track world, everybody is getting more unified, especially over New Hampshire. Those guys are all working together with a rules yeah. package. Owners are friends. Owners go out drinking together, party together. But the two dragways over here in Maine, the New Oxford dragway run by Les Williams and the Winterport one that's run by a lot of guys. Andy Cook is kind of like the general manager, president. Uh, they work good together. They, they, they have some, some events that they cross promote and, uh, you know, they were hanging out together up there at the show. Yeah. And, yeah, it's amazing to see these track promoters that we say hanging out and coordinating their schedule so they're not... They're both having an event the same day, but not having a big event the same day. They're just having something so that the guys that want to travel can do something that day, but it's not a points event or whatever. Yep, nope, and, absolutely. Uh, so it's good to, to hear, hear from those guys, and we're going to hear what they have to say over there at Winterport and, and New Oxford Dragway about their 2020 season. All right, guys, I'm over here with the Winterport Dragway Group. I'm here with Andy. Andy, you know more about this, so you got thrown under the bus today. <laughs> I saw everyone pointing fingers, but it's okay. I like you. So we're going to talk about drag racing at Winterport Dragway. Now, every year you hear people going up, and they come back, and they say, it was such a family-run business. It's so much fun. And track improvements, track improvements. And we have more on the list. Absolutely. Uh, the improvements at Winterport will continue for as long as we're there. Uh, there is no end state. It's always about the racers, the fam families, making sure that it's a fun environment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have our competition when the helmets go on and the shields <laughs> go down. Uh, but other than that, you know, it, it's unbelievable. We hear all the time people bring their little kids up there and, you know, we take them around, put them in the cars and let them play. And they're just amazed that in such a competitive competition-based environment that it can be so fun. Now, I know that you were talking about car counts, and, and it's, it's, he says it's growing every year, and I, I, I almost wonder, like all these TV shows we're seeing on, on like Motor Trend Television, like even the Street Outlaws, obviously they're doing it on the street, we don't promote that, but it's starting to rebuild the drag racing community, and it's starting to show up at the drag strips now, and I think it's great. It, it is, and by all means, we do not promote Street, street racing, racing. <laughs> uh, you know, whether it be uh, circle track or drag racing, there's always a venue to do it mm -hmm. right Legal. and safe. You know, the big thing is safe. <clears throat> um, but not only have the TV shows helped, but I think there's there's been a you know a surge in people remembering and noticing that what we're doing is still here mm -hmm. um, and. You know, I, I'll give a shout out to Les at Oxford. You know, now that we have both tracks again working together, uh, we're seeing a lot of past racers come back. Mm -hmm. A lot of the vehicles come back that we used to see, as well as uh, a next generation building new vehicles to come in and continue the sport. Now, let's, let's talk about schedule wise. You guys always have something going on. We got gaster guys. We even have a, a new group of guys standing right behind us here. With some, is it politically correct term rat rod? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, the two vehicles that are here are not rat rods. One was built in '47, and the other one, I believe, '51 or '52. They haven't been touched since they were originally built. These are uh, period correct rods mm -hmm. uh, versus a rat rod where you kind of throw a bunch of stuff in a washing machine and something comes out <laughs> at the end. Um, yeah, this is, this is actually happening in August this year. It's the first, not the last. Mm -hmm. It's a flathead jamboree. It's a pine tree jamboree. It's all flathead powered vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is a criteria that they have to meet. Um, <coughs> through, yeah, Eli English is here with me. He's, he's helping organize it so that we have nothing but period correct hot rods. Right. Um, so all of us that have, you know, the big loud, we're parking them for the weekend <laughs> and enjoy this. Right. It's a rolling history show. Right. It really is. So it's great. And yeah, we have the Gasa guys, of course, six mm -hmm. times a year, our camp out weekends, you know, a blast, great bunch of people. Um, and we've also added... <clears throat> We have a special event at least once a month. Mm -hmm. One weekend a month is dedicated to a special event, whether it be a bracket bash type format, a specific class race, a quick eight door car race. It, the schedule continues to grow. 
Well, I'm sure I'll be making a couple trips up there this year. And uh, if you if you want to find out more information, I'm sure check you guys out on Facebook. Do you have a website? Uh, check us out on Facebook. That's what everyone's going. Well, I appreciate your time, man. You guys put up on a great display. You brought in some really nice stuff. And uh, some best of shows went home with you guys this year. Congratulations. Well, thank you. And we appreciate everything, you know, that Steve and the crew does to give us this venue. All right. So, thank, thank you very thank much. Thank you. All right, All right, guys, I'm over here on the back wall. I'm here with Les with New Oxford Dragway and the shop, representing two places today. Uh, last year, you took over Oxford Dragway, renamed it New Oxford Dragway, and you had a pretty good season. Yeah, I was um, really impressed at the season that we had. We uh, were hoping um, that we had um, a lot of attention, um, which we were actually really surprised, but that's, that's mostly because, you know, everybody uh, is into that same spirit. Um, more of the people were happy that the place is just going to still be around than, uh, than, than anything else really. So we, we had a lot of support. Um, there was definitely a lot of things to overcome, uh, some track conditions, uh, you know, all that other stuff. But every, everybody was really great. Um, the, the owners of the property were very willing to work with us with everything that we needed to do. So we, uh, we couldn't ask for a better year last year, that's for sure. Well, I've done, I've done some drag racing, I've done some circle track racing, and I've noticed that the drag racing community, uh, racing communities in general, everybody is there to help out. And I know you've got a lot of people that come to race with you, and they also help you out. So that's pretty amazing. I mean, you get the guys that are paying the bills to come in, and then they're going forward and helping you after to make sure that that place stayed open. Yeah, that's, uh, that's an understatement <laughs> for how everybody that was a racer there was more than willing to put out that extra effort um extremely generous donations to help us get going um th there certainly wouldn't have been anything smooth about it without the racers and that that's pretty much what holds that track together so all right we talked about last year let's talk about what's coming up this year i'm on i'm on your facebook page your stuff shows up all the time and you're always coming up with new ideas and maybe start something new in 2020 yeah, well, last year we ended up uh, meeting a lot of new people down south, uh, something where, you know, uh, well, south of us, uh, New England Dragway, uh, we met a lot of, uh, you know, very, very good people down there, uh, people that we've seen race throughout the year that once we got talking, a lot of these people didn't even realize there was a track north of them, let alone a state, actually, for Massachusetts, most of those people, but um, they were... Uh, they, they had some pretty good ideas, and one of the big things is that the, uh, the no time scene has been very large. The street racing scene um, is, is growing, which uh, is not necessary, but, um, you know, that, that whole group is looking for a lot more grudge racing, you know, style type events. And uh, this year we're starting off uh, May 9th with our first no time race, and it looks like we have a lot of interest um, sell, so we're really looking forward to that event. I think that'll help us kick off the year very well. Yeah, so in case you aren't familiar, no time means they're not going to have a time slip. It's the first one to get to the finish line. There's no times, there's no brackets, nothing. It's, it's a heads-up racing, and the fastest car will win. That's correct. So at that point, uh, it takes a lot more of the driver's efforts in the car and trusting that your car is going to do what it needs to. Um, it also means that there's a lot more people with a lot more horsepower on the table versus just trying to run for consistency. So it's a... It's a really aggressive, fast-moving class, um, and uh, we're really excited about what the future of that might bring. So we're talking about big horsepower cars. You brought out a big horsepower car today. This is new to you guys, and we're going to see it in 2020. What, what do we got here? Uh, this is uh, a Gen 3 Camaro. Um, it's powered by a 509. It's supposed to be somewhere in the vicinity of 1,000 horsepower, um, low five second eighth mile car. Uh, this car, as we get down, um, you know, it might end up turbocharged uh, a little bit faster, you know, once we have more provisions for the track being able to handle the mile an hour. All right, guys, well, as you're walking around checking out the show, make sure you come over here talk with Les. If you have questions about maybe putting a turbo, supercharger, or doing some general repairs to your car, he's your guy you want to talk to as he runs the shop, and also he runs the dragway. So make sure you come over and talk to him. Drag racing is a great way to dial in your car, and it's a legal place to race in hell, right? Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, we can get you going at the shop. We have the dyno in-house. We can get you uh, taken care of, and we can get you testing at the track all to, in the same package. So, 
All right, thank you very much, Les, and we'll see you in 2020. Thank you. Welcome to Mainly Motorsports. To order a copy of this show, send a check or money order for $15, including shipping and handling to Mainly Motorsports, 2 Main Street, Suite 17-103, Biddeford, Maine, 04005. And please add the show number in the description of the show. Don't deal with just anybody to seal coat your driveway or business this season. Call Black Magic. They bring over 20 years of experience in seal coating and crack filling. Black Magic's skilled team makes sure the job is always done right. On schedule with quality workmanship at a fair price. Protect your investment in your driveway by getting it sealed with Black Magic. Ooh, Black Magic. My name is Scott. This is Devin. We're the owners of Black Magic Seal Coating. Let us earn your business today. You'll be glad you did. Football fans, have we got a deal for you. VIP Tour and Charter Bus Company is offering round-trip transportation to Gillette Stadium to watch the New England Patriots make another run for the Super Bowl. Ride in style knowing we're doing the driving. So if you've got a ticket, we've got your ride. It doesn't get any better than that. Just log on to VIPChartercoaches.com, click on the Browse Book Tour button, and book your trip today. It's that simple. Relax and leave the driving to us, and we'll leave the tailgating to you. For a trusted name in residential and commercial site work in the Southern Main area, call Peter Pettit Excavating. We can handle everything from the complete house lot to those nasty water and sewer line repairs. Septic systems are another area that we specialize in. During the snow season, Pettit Excavating has the equipment to handle any size job. And when the race season arrives, be sure to follow the number 7 Hewitt's Family Restaurant Chevrolet on the past Super Late Model Tour. Call 207-282-9305 to get the job done right. That's Peter Pettit Excavating. Welcome back to Mainly Motorsports, and we're here with the Dirty Lou, and uh, you guys will all get a chance to see him in a couple weeks, Racing Preview 2020. Obviously, the car won't be on display, the new car that uh, you're building up there at No Such Chassis, but uh, you're getting closer, huh? Getting closer, yeah. we got some pipe in there. We're not close to being done at all, but we're laying some pipe. And I bet looking, you are. Looking good <laughs> now, you fool. Oh, uh, but yeah, Randy Harmon and uh, Joe Morris have been up there bending pipe and uh, welding it in, and it's getting there. Yeah, no, yeah. E exactly, and uh, nothing like building a new car, but the costs and expenses are there, you know. Oh, well, so they are. If anybody's looking to spend a little money, uh, Dirty Lou, looking for a little extra sponsor help, so you can reach out and, uh, you know, if you don't know Dirty Lou, he'll be walking around the show, or you can see me or send me a message, and... You know, because it takes takes a lot to get these things to the racetrack. You know? It certainly does. And anybody, any amount, appreciate it. Thank you, guys. No, absolutely. And uh, But uh, Randy's busy up there, and uh, your next chance to see Randy will be at Race and Preview 2020. He'll be the guy behind the wheel selling those tickets. And, uh, yeah, that, got, that engine. You've got chances, right? Bought the first one in Augusta. Yep, yeah. So uh, probably buy another buy, one. Buy a couple more important ones. Yeah, and that's a, that's a deal, you know, and it's a great deal for somebody, a turnkey, uh, really, uh, you know, I don't know what you got. Maybe add a starter and a flywheel or something, but everything else is there to be able to yeah. bolt that right in your car and go racing. The, you know, GM crate, 602. Yeah. Nice I, I'm keeping my other car as intact as possible, so a second engine would be that'd be perfect then. Yeah, no, exactly. And, uh, you know, the Quirk Auto Group uh, supporting us with the with the engine and, uh, you know, Benjamin Motorsports, s and Performance stepped up to help us out with the with a real nice KRC uh, unit on the front, the power yep. steering, the, the, that water, is nice. the alternator, I mean, all that stuff. I mean, that's that's the best of the best when you can, I mean, they're running them on super late models. Oh, know? yeah. So yeah. to run that on a Wildcat, super street, street stock type of thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the be the KRC is the best in the business right now. Yeah. So if you're looking for tickets, if you can't make the show, reach out to me. I can get them to you or mail them to you. They're $20 each, $7, 7 for 100 we have the drawing at 7 o'clock on Saturday night. So somebody can either take it home with them. We'll bring it to the garage. You can come get it. So we can sell it right on the spot. Don't, you do not have to be there to win it. To win so the engine. But you got to be there to win the, the other prizes. The three contingency prizes. A drum of Sunoco race fuel, which has got to be what $600 value. I would say. You know, a dozen uh, embroidered hats with your, your team number on it. Uh, donated by Embroider Expertise and a scanner and a, a race bag scanner package donated by Waddell, and a, uh, Waddell Communications. Um, so, um, but you got to be present for them ones. You got to be present for them. And, uh, you know, I, I, even, I wouldn't mind winning one of them. No, no, absolutely. And, uh, 
So yeah, and anytime you win anything, it's good. So yeah, Racing Preview 2020, the Portland Expo, February 21st and 22nd, your chance to, you know, take a chance and win that motor. We're gonna give it away on Saturday night. You know, a lot of race cars are gonna be there. Beecher's gonna have a huge display. Star's gonna have a huge display. Well, Chris Cassett, Lee. That rock crawler from Augusta, yeah, they're they're, that's the show. He was one of the first ones to ask about the, yeah, the Portland show. Yeah, them, you know, the Bartlett Bridge Raceway. You know, yeah. they're gonna have a uh, lot, of, lot of tracks stepping up to the plate this year. Yeah, yeah they wanna be a part of it. As they know, Daytona's happening this week, and we're gonna talk about that in a couple of, in, in a little bit. But Daytona is happening this week, and that's Man, if I that everybody gets, that and, gets everybody's blood. And it's not the weekend of the car show, finally. No, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so we're going to take a break, and we come back. A couple more groups we're going to hear from that will be in attendance at Racing Preview 2020. Nelka Legends. and uh, uh, you know, They've got a big schedule this year. I've seen a little, uh, they just had an announcement this week. they got a big race at Beatridge. They're going to pay $1,500 yep. to win a Legend race. So that's a pretty good payday for those guys who right. used to race for a hundred bucks. So uh, I know they're going to have a lot of exciting things to talk about as they did up at Augusta. Uh, you know, they'll be on display along with their, uh, the president and, uh, you know, the, um, the organization Go Motorsports. They're yep. heavily involved in Nelka. They actually, are the, you know, Mike's the president and the owner of Go Motorsports. So uh, they'll be right there and, you know, they'll give you all, anything you need to get involved with that series. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that's a that's a good group to be Yeah, involved. he's a pacifier, right? Yep, yep, yep. So they, they'll have a vendor space and the Nelka booths. Yep. So we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll listen from Nelka and Wicked Good, the old timers that love to still race. Wiscas at Speedway is back, and we have the cure for your need for speed. Maine's biggest and fastest proudly presents eight featured divisions, including Pro Stocks, Late Models, Four Cylinder Pro Stocks, Modifieds, and more. Plus, special features throughout the season, including the Nell Car Legends, the Wicked Good Vintage Racers, the NEMA Midgets, and Duros, and more. All this fun, all this excitement, all for just five bucks. Wiscas at Speedway. West on the Road, Wiscas at Online. You don't have to wait until the end of camping season to get your best price. Hi, I'm Scott from Scott's Recreation. We're starting our end of season sale now. We have over 300 campers in stock and every unit is on sale. Even the 2020s, up to $16,000 off travel trailers, up to $30,000 off fifth wheels and motorhomes, up to $40,000 off toy haulers. Ask about our bi-weekly payment program to save you even more money. Financing available, trades welcome. Scott's Recreation, Turner and Manchester, Maine. Our family has been in business since 1972. I'm Johnny Wolf. I personally drive and state inspect every vehicle we sell. 21st Century Motors now offers low rate credit union financing and first time buyer programs. We have a large selection of vehicles starting at $49.90. Quality vehicles and guaranteed repairs. Come see why more than 50% of our business is repeat or referral. Visit us today on Route 25 in Gorham, Maine or online at 21stCenturyMaine.com. From, From our family, family to, to your, your family. family. All right, guys, we're over here at the Nelcar Legend booth. I'm here with Matt Grant. Matt, you were the chosen one this year. So let's talk about what's going on with Nelcar. Your guys' schedule is crazy long this year. Yeah, we've, we've definitely got a, a good schedule out in front of us. Um, we're, Nelcar is merged with the uh, Granite State Legends Tour, so, um, and he, so we've picked up a few new tracks uh, in the southern New Hampshire area. Now, I was talking to one of the other guys earlier, and they said that uh, any oval course stuff you guys are doing and the road course stuff Granite's doing, right? Yep, Loudon will still be running the, the road course end of things, as well as a couple races on their dirt track that's new over there. Um, and anything uh, oval outside of Seekonk is going to be run by Nelcar in New England. Now, let's talk about your season last year. How'd you do? Well, we had a up and down season. We, we started off strong, had a few podiums, and uh, then went had had a lot of engine problems down the stretch. So I think we only ended up doing a dozen races, um, and we're I think we're ninth in points. So um, hopefully a better year ahead of us this year. Now let's talk about the competitiveness of this class, these Nelcar Legend cars. You have age groups from how old to how young. A lot of young guys getting into this and showing these guys have been racing for years where the victory lane is. I mean, it's, it's, been, it's an amazing group of guys and you're all helping each other out each and every week. You're traveling the same tracks, but the, like Bob, Wick, Bob Weymouth over here, he's, what did he travel to? Where did he go? 
Oh, Bob goes all over the place. Yeah. He's been to Vegas. He's been to Florida, North Carolina. Um, the uh, Road Course Nationals were in Georgia, so there was probably eight or nine guys from New England that went down for that, as well as the uh, the Asphalt Nationals at Carteret in North Carolina. There was um, a few guys from here that, that went down for that as well. All right, well, we've we got a very large schedule here. Anything that stands out for this year? It's okay. You can use yeah. the cheat sheet. <laughs> Um, well, we're back at Wiscasset Speedway for uh, a few races this year. They they enjoy having us a lot. Um, we're going back to the New Hampshire Mini Oval. Uh, we've got a dozen races at Beach Ridge for Thursday Thunder, as well as uh, a couple NASCAR night shows at Beach Ridge. Okay. So for the first time, that'll be really cool. Um, going to Monadnock, uh, Riverside, Claremont, um, Yeah, and White Mountain. And White Mountain. <laughs> yeah. There's one more. He knew yep. it. Yep. Well, Matt, thank you for the interview, and uh, good luck this year. Hopefully your season goes better than last year, and I'm sure you guys are going to have a lot of fun. Thank you. All right, guys. We're over here in the center aisle with Wicked Good Vintage Racing. I'm with Keith. Did I say that right? Yep. All right, Keith. He's the president. You are president, not Trump. He's nope. the president <laughs> of Wicked Good Vintage yep. Racing going on Association. Going on my second year as president, and looking to be having a really strong year this year. Racing in all the three divisions with the hobbies, racing uh, their own schedule with five races, and then having our early late models and our outlaws racing. Going back to a couple of new tracks this year, heading back to Lee. Also heading, we have our races at Wiscasset. We're having to Riverside, Star, Speedway 95, Bang so Oxford. Yep. Really a busy season, 18 races in total, and. Keeping all these cars going. <laughs> now, a lot, of you guys, a lot of people don't understand, when you guys show up, it's, you guys are vintage race cars. You get a nostalgic race cars. Some of these are a little bit newer chassis, older bodies. You do have somewhat of a rule book, depending on where you land in divisions. But you guys actually race out there. This is not, you're not drawing for a position and you finish in that position. You guys go out and you start racing. We do, really. I mean, we get to the track. We'll have a race. Each division will have their race meeting. But there is no predetermined winner. I mean, there's how many races you can win in a season, but we go out there, we race side by side, and we put on a race. Mm -hmm. Biggest thing is we want to take the cars home in one piece and load them on the trailer. Now, a lot of people say, oh, well, they're updated chassis. Well, have you seen the safety you guys used to back in the day? I mean, <laughs> safety's got to be important. We saw Scott Tucker take a nasty hit in the wall a while back, and he had an up-to-date chassis, and I'm pretty sure that's what saved his life. Oh, yeah, I mean, some of these cars, with our outlaws, you're talking cars that are really going at the same seed as a, a, a late model, mm -hmm. you know, a late model, and if we didn't have these updated chassis in them, some of these hits, if, like, especially with Scotty's or Dave Alexander's that was cast at this year, would, yeah. could, could have ended up a whole lot different, mm -hmm. and I mean, yeah, they're, old, they're updated chassis, but... Updated safety <laughs> as well. I've seen some of these older cars old water pipe for a roll cage and what, what I would call a lawn chair now is a race seat, strap on a brain bucket and go and, and race. Exactly. Me and my friend just pulled an uh, old Wiscasset car, probably 30, 40 years old, and only the only reason we took it out of the junkyard was actually turn it into a couch with a rear end. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I, you wouldn't catch me in it. I mean, this thing had, the seat was a uh, truck seat turned to the side on chain. Ooh. <laughs> so, I mean... We're out there, we're racing, and we're not doing parade laps, and right. you really need the safety in there to really make it to where we can get up on the wheel and actually go side by side with these cars and feel safe about it. Well, guys, if you're, if you're looking for a trip down memory lane, make sure you make one of the Wicked Good Vintage Race Car Association's races and see these old guys, and, and I should say old guys, old cars, because you got some young guys coming up through, but again, if you want a trip down memory lane and you want to see what it was like to watch the races back in the 70s, you've got to get some check you guys out. Definitely. And also just thank the tracks that we go to. We're a touring series. We don't charge. Mm -hmm. So we're just there to put on a show and have a good time. So we just go out and have fun and play with our own cars. All right. Well, thank you, Keith. And we'll see you this summer. Sounds good. Thank you very much. So, yeah, like I said, the, you know, Nelka, uh, they've been around forever. Mm -hmm. Peter Prescott brought the legends into Maine back in the right. 80s. So, yeah. Uh, and that group continues to grow. Turns out some really good racers. Some of the racers you're seeing 
uh, win championships, races from, on the sports series level, all the way up through the super late model level. A lot, 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 lot of kids have modified, graduated out of that. Modifies, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so don't think because they're little cars on it, you know, look like little miniature race cars, that they're not a handful. And oh, they're a handful. If you wheel one of them. I did the arrive and drive at, at Starwood one. And they're, so they're a handful. Yep, yep. So that's two good groups to stop by and see at the race and preview. And uh, to pick up a schedule and find out where you can go see them if you've never seen them. So we're going to take a break. We'll be right back here on Mainly Motorsports. Hi, I'm Sean Moody. We take pride in our facilities. And at Moody's, it's what's inside that matters. We believe it's more than just the exterior looking good. It's what's inside that matters. Restoring the structure of your vehicle the factory specs is critical to your safety. I'm proud of our Moody's co-worker owners who understand the importance of protecting your valuable asset. And we all know what our most valuable asset is. It's what's inside that matters. Welcome to LST Landscaping, where we've been providing complete landscape solutions to all of Southern Maine since 1969. We specialize in year-round landscape maintenance and snow services, including weekly lawn mowing, seasonal cleanups, sweeping, mulching, and so much more. Many more customizable services are available upon request. Please call our office today at 207-878-1578 or visit our website, lstlandscapinginc.com. Patman's Redemption and Agency Liquor Store is located at 95 Tanberg Trail in Wyndham, Maine. With over 400 feet of hard liquor and 15 doors of ice cold beer and soda, Patman's can handle all of your beverage needs. And if it's wine on your agenda, we have over 300 varieties in stock. Then when the party's over, Patman's can handle all of your main returnables, and we welcome all bottle drives. And if you're late for the race, drop off the bottles and pick up the cash at your convenience. Hey, this is Patman himself. Just letting you know that Patman's is your one-stop shop for all your thirsty needs. Welcome back to Mainly Motorsports. We're here with the Dirty Louie trying to get me to buy him lunch. I told him I got Girl Scout cookies right over there, so oh, take some with you. Perfect. Put me in, Coach. Take some with you. Yeah. <laughs> Never be mad. She find out I got Girl Scout cookies here. But uh, <laughs> 2020 race season, you know, yeah. scary at the end of the year because not knowing if you'd ever strap into a race car again. Not, not that it was life-threatening and all that, but, you, you know, you... If you don't have use of an arm or something, you know, yeah. you just can't do it, you know. But right. No, it was scary. We, but a lot of questions as far as life in general goes, and racing was definitely on the back burner for a while. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and uh, now the Dirty Lou's ready. They're up there at No Such Chassis up there in Buxton. They're rocking and rolling, building a brand new car. Yeah, right, uh, we're pre preparing the Charles Briggs a new car. Um, we're doing the cars for Joe Morse and Ray Talia. Joe's is pretty much done, but... Got a few more things to do to it, but yeah, we're getting there. Yeah, but the new one, the, Dirty Lou. And, uh, a brand new car, first time since 2009, so the other girl's a little tired, so we're going to retire it for a little bit. Yeah. yeah Keep know. it around for a spare, but. Yeah, and, you know, so the plans are to chase another championship at Beach Ridge Motor Speedway. I mean, that's where you yeah. make the sponsor. Yeah, going to make an official announcement today that, yes, we're going to run Beach Ridge full-time in 2020. Um, so you heard it here at Mainly Motorsports. And I don't know if Andy Cusack's tuned in. Probably not. But uh, he's coming back, Andy. He's coming home. Yeah. Um, we're going to hit the other car around. We're going to do open shows with it. Definitely going to do a Triple Crown at Lee. Yeah, the Lance Davis Triple Crown. Um, probably hit like the May Madness and the and October Fest at Lee with the old car. Yeah, just bounce around. And uh, yeah, gives you, gives you some options that you haven't had in the past. You know yeah. what I mean? Cause Everybody knows when you get points racing, you're always so nervous about, you know, trying to run that other, you know, do something else and uh, tearing up what you got. So, yeah. Not a bad idea. So, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, obviously you'll have a lot of familiar faces, no such chassis, you know, obviously, yeah. you know, the mainly Sandy Gravel group, they might be able to scrape up a little money, you know. The main Sandy Gravel, I don't know. Guy, guy ain't got golf it no more. What you yeah. doing? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Mainly here. Mainly awards, mainly motorsports, yeah. sports, who knows? Something, yeah. Something. You Ferguson know, stock, so, you know. There's like back for their 11th season. Yeah, no. There's um, a strategy back on the car again for the, their 11th season. Uh, yeah, it's hard to believe it's been that, it's been that long we're up there. No such strategy, but. Yeah. When you mentioned 2009, seems like that was yesterday. That's a Doesn't long time ago. Because we I know were it. talking, it's funny, we were talking earlier today. We used to do the Driver of the Month awards and all that, and 
I remember Brick won it in 2009 because he won three, three in a row, in a row. Inclu including the 50 lap. Huh? Yeah, and uh, yeah, and I won it one month. Yeah, and we were just talking about it, and I'm like, oh, it seems like just yesterday. That's 11 years ago. 11 years ago. I know it's amazing. Where's time gone? Wow. Long We're getting old, Steve. There we are. <laughs> Speaking of getting old, <laughs> we'll take a break, but before we do, let's hear from Wayne Elston. There's a guy that's old. He was there when dirt was created. But no, seriously, <laughs> Wayne is a guy that has done so much over the years, and I love to find him on Facebook and the old pictures, and, you know, he, you know, people say, you know, Wayne Elston was involved, helped me here, helped me there, you know, raced back in the years ago, and you know, he's still involved with the karting program up at Speedway 95, bringing his blue bus around, selling parts. So uh, yeah. he was at the Northeast Motorsports Expo for the 32nd year. So we'll hear what Wayne Elston has to say about uh, him and being old. Yeah. All right, guys, I'm over here in the corner with our longtime good friend, Wayne Elston. Wayne, you've been here for how many years? I, I can't count that high right now. So. Well, this is the 32nd <laughs> annual Northeast Motorsports Expo, and you were at number... I think we're at number one. We might have taken a couple off, so we'll say 30 for sure. Oh, we appreciate you coming here every year. We're always happy to see you, and you're always helping these guys out, finish up their builds with all your stuff. But unfortunately, we've, we've heard some rumors and some bad news, which is good news for you, I'm sure, but we're going to miss it. What's going on? Well, I think after 50-something years, we have the speed shop business up for sale. Uh, my wife hasn't been well, so I think it's that time. Uh, if we sell it, uh, and the NASCAR stuff is pretty well gone now. Uh, the only thing we'll have left is uh, go-kart business, and we'll keep that for a little while mm -hmm. and go from there. So now I know stuff's on sale. You know, you're selling your speed business, so does that mean discounts, discounts, discounts? Today you probably will find the lowest prices you've ever seen uh, <laughs> today. And like I say, back to the uh, I'm part owner of the Speedway Karting out of Speedway 95, mm -hmm. so we're trying to build that up. If anybody would like to sponsor races, come see me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we got lots of sales, uh, carding parts, rivets, uh, just everything. We got what little bit of diecast we have left. That's half price or, or whatever. All right. So we got some good deals. Just hope we can get some good weather and a good crowd today. Well, I think the uh, weatherman was a little confused on what was actually going to happen today. So I think today's going to be an okay day. But Wayne, again, thank you very much. We always appreciate having you here and. Uh, I, I know that a lot of people are going to miss you. Well, I'm going to miss the people too. Uh, this, this show means a lot. Steve Perry means a lot to me. And he's done a lot for my business and everybody's business. So thanks again, Steve. And uh, come on over and say hi. Hopefully, you know, maybe we'll be back next year if we haven't sold it. Yep. But I think the end's coming close. Well, I know that you are here helping these guys out and they can still get a hold of you if they need something now and all these guys are spur of the moment buyers they need to they're, they're in the middle of a project they need something they can still get a hold of you they can still find you yeah everybody knows where we are so just ask somebody else <laughs> if you can't see us on facebook or this or that pretty much everybody knows where we are all right well thank you very much wade we know Maine is hard on cars, so when your ignition won't turn or you lose your key, that just adds insult to injury. Why tow it? E-Keys for Cars technicians will solve your problem in your door yard or at the mall and get you back on the road. AAA member? You should be. Your AAA locksmith coverage comes right off the bill. E-Keys for Cars, Maine's fast, affordable solution to your car key and lock problems. On the Auto Mile, Route 1, Saco. E-Keys for Cars. Our family has been in business since 1972. I'm Johnny Wolf. I personally drive and state inspect every vehicle we sell. 21st Century Motors now offers low rate credit union financing and first time buyer programs. We have a large selection of vehicles starting at $49.90. Quality vehicles and guaranteed repairs. Come see why more than 50% of our business is repeat or referral. Visit us today on Route 25 in Gorham, Maine or online at 21stCenturyMaine.com. From, From our, our family, family to your, your family. family. You don't have to wait until the end of camping season to get your best price. Hi, I'm Scott from Scott's Recreation. We're starting our end of season sale now. We have over 300 campers in stock and every unit is on sale. Even the 2020s, up to $16,000 off travel trailers, up to $30,000 off fifth wheels and motorhomes, up to $40,000 off toy haulers. Ask about our bi-weekly payment program to save you even more money. Financing available, trades welcome. Scott's Recreation, Turner and Manchester, Maine. 
Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by... Four Seasons Synthetic. See them for all your Amsoil product needs. Moody's Collision Centers, now with seven convenient locations. Gorham, Scarborough, Biddeford, Portland, Sanford, Lewiston, and now South Portland. Visit us at moodyscollision.com. Well, welcome back to Mainly Motorsports and a couple of guys that are going to be at the Portland Expo. And if you need your car leaded or you need some wiring issues with your helmet or your receiver or spotting, anything you need from that side of things, these are the two guys to see. Warren Hamilton, ASM Graphics. Obviously, we have a relationship with him, Connor McDougall, Corey Morgan. So we have three guys in our camp that do amazing, amazing things. Always putting and turning out show-winning award cars. And, Them uh, guys never cease to amaze. Uh, it's crazy what they do. And it Warren, is. Warren will be on display. He had the uh, Nick Cusack number 61. I don't know if it's going to stay 61 up at the Augusta show. And, um, but he had that on hand. And then um, I don't know what he's going to do in Portland. If he'll have another car, if Nick will be there, if Warren will just be there. Maybe he'll have the uh, number 44 modified. Maybe. Maybe. You know, usually got her in a go-kart, so yeah. we'll see. But the other guy, Waddell Communications, he'll be there with his trailer. RE, when we say RE, Racing Electronics, everybody's heard of Racing Electronics. You know, yeah. All them headsets up on the roof, most of them, 95% of them, up on the roof at Daytona, uh, Racing Electronics stuff. Sean's down there now, and um, he is the country's number one dealer, you know, based yeah. out of you know Plainville, Connecticut. Comes to our show in Augusta, our show in Portland. He's become really good friends with us. Yeah. And a good guy. Very good guy. So any mm -hmm. needs you have, check him out. And yeah. he's got, uh, he doesn't have just radio stuff. He has Han stuff. He has helmets. helmets steering wheels. So he's uh, yeah. he's branching out. So we'll hear what these two have to say about the Augusta show. And obviously, keep in mind, they're going to be at Portland. So uh, look them up. All right, guys, we're over here on the backside. I'm with Waddell Communications, and I got to tell you, we, we just did the math. You've been here nine, eight years, and we love having you here. But I remember when, like, let's say six years ago, it was a small table, a couple radios. Now we've got helmets, we've got scanners, we've got safety gear, all kinds of fun stuff, and your trailer's gotten a lot bigger. Yeah, we started off kind of small, not knowing where it was going to go. And fortunately, it, it excelled a lot faster than I even thought. And now we're, uh, we're, we're pretty established in, on the East Coast here. We go from Maine, we go right down to South Boston for the first modified tour race. Perfect. So you can find me at Oxford Plains, um, you know, Madadnock, Seekonk, Stafford, Thompson, Riverhead, Wall of the Jersey, yep. wherever there's a race, if, uh, Hudson. Now, I know this is something that, you know, being able to communicate with your driver and your pit crew while they're working and during a race, it's amazing. But I highly recommend, just like in my world with the DJ business, if you're going to buy something, make sure you buy the good stuff. And that's what you guys sell. I've seen people try to do the little two-way radios that you buy at Walmart and it's a set of earbuds, and it, it just doesn't pan out. Yeah, fortunately for myself, I partner with Race Electronics and they're, they're the worldwide leader in racing communications. So on any given Sunday, Saturday, or Friday night, you want to watch a truck race, if you look at the crew chief on the toolbox, he's wearing a red headset 90% of the time. Yeah. So it equates back to, yeah, you get what you pay for. So mm -hmm. you might have to pay a little bit more, but you want the equipment to last. And that's what I'm finding out. The, the, I've sold people stuff from up here, and they've come back and said, oh, thanks. I really like you know, what you mm -hmm. sold me. It lasted. Now I, I have to get new customers because their stuff's not breaking down as frequently as it was. So it's worth the cost of investment, you know what I mean? So if you buy the better stuff, it's gonna last, it's gonna be better for you in the long run. Because you don't wanna go out to a race and have your radios, you know, not work and be aggravated and frustrated. It's hard enough to succeed in the sport. You wanna to try to lessen the, the blow of aggravation. Well, I, I will say one thing I do notice at the beginning of this show and all the way to the end, I noticed that guys have seen you and bought some equipment from you. They bring it back. They said, hey, I'm having a little bit of a problem. And you know how to fix it. You keep stuff in stock. I mean, these are items that get banged around in the, in the trailer. So things happen. And you can fix it for them. It's not like a throwaway thing. You have to buy all brand new. And I, I think a lot of people appreciate that. Yeah, we try to provide uh, track side service. Every, every track I go to, I have the trailer. And depending on the workload, some stuff that I, I would, you would drop off and I would take back, either send it back to you or bring it back to the next uh, event that I'm at, or I'd just ship it to you, depending on what the, what the, the work is. 
that if it's a small little repair, you just bring it in, in the trailer, we fix it up, solder it up, and send them on his way. That's awesome. Well, I know everybody appreciates that, and we, we thank you for being a, a repeat offender here at the Northeast Motorsports Expo. Hopefully, we'll see you next year. Thanks, Corey. Thanks, Steve and the staff. They do a great job here. Um, it's always a pleasure to come up and see the people, and we'll be at the Portland show in a couple weeks. Perfect. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. And we're back here at the Northeast Motorsports Expo, and we've caught up with Warren Hamilton from ASM Graphics, one of the renowned leaders in the industry of graphic arts not only in race cars, but in all types of business. Warren, it looks like we have another great show here this week. You've been here before. you got a beautiful race car here. What's new at ASM Graphics this year? Uh, not a lot new, but we're really busy doing cars. And uh, this year, it looks like everybody's really up the bar on these things. They're unbelievable cars here. It's, uh, uh, I don't know what's, what's to come in the future, because how are we going to top this? So I see on your social media pages, you're out lettering trucks. You do all kinds of things. Uh, ASM Graphics obviously is a business that can service almost any needs in the, that you uh, via signage. Oh, absolutely. We do. Uh, excuse me. Truck wraps, uh, banners, signs, uh, anything. You know, we'll do. We'll do. We'll do uh, anything. Now, this race car that's in your booth here. Tell us a little bit about this. Well, this is Nick Cusack's Beatridge car. Uh, everybody's been curious about it because we changed the number this year. Uh, we went from two to sixty-one for Nick's granddad, Ralph. And uh, hopefully it, uh, it'll, it'll run as good as it looks. Now, Nick always ran the number two, but interestingly enough, Ralph started with number two and went to 61. So now it looks like Nick may be carrying on that tradition a little bit. And you do some spotting for him, so you're involved with the team. So I assume you have a lot of input into what kind of design the car will carry? Oh, yeah. I mean, Nick doesn't care. He just lets me do whatever I feel like doing. And uh, this is what we ended up with this year. It's kind of a last-minute deal. and. Uh, and you're right, uh, Ralph started with the number two, and so did Nick, and uh, Ralph won most of his championships with a 61, so we're kind of hoping we can head that way. And anybody that wants to uh, get in touch with ASM Graphics, where can they get in touch with you? Well, you can look us up on Facebook, or you can give us a call, 207-671-4140, or we're right next to Beatrice Speedway, uh, almost throw a rock to the pit gate, so we're there. Hi, I'm Sean Moody. We take pride in our facilities, and at Moody's, it's what's inside that matters. We believe it's more than just the exterior looking good, it's what's inside that matters. Restoring the structure of your vehicle the factory specs is critical to your safety. I'm proud of our Moody's co-worker owners who understand the importance of protecting your valuable asset. And we all know what our most valuable asset is, it's what's inside that matters. Servicing differentials is virtually impossible. The confined space makes fill holes difficult to reach, and industry standard conical bottles are rigid and hard to squeeze. That combination makes for a messy job. Plus, you can't get all of the gear lube out of the bottle, so you have to buy more than you need to complete the job. And engineering your own solution only results in disaster. Not anymore. Introducing the new Amsoil Easy Pack. Easily access hard to service differentials. Easily squeeze out all of the contents. And easily stay clean while you do it. No more leftover fluid or inconvenient rigid bottles. No more trouble reaching difficult fill holes. No more mess. Amsoil Severe Gear in the new Easy Pack the solution to all your problems. Another first from Amsoil. For a stocking dealer nearest you, call toll-free 877-761-8375 or visit fourseasonsynthetic.com. Well, we wrap up this week's edition with the dirty... we got to find a new name for you. <laughs> dirty Lou, Andy Austin called you Bad Santa for a while. That's because of all the trips to Florida and racing the Santa Claus car. Come up with a name. Send me a name. What, what, what can we call the Dirty Lou? Had Lightning Lou over the years. I'll change your first name to Nate. Call you Nasty Nate or something. No. Uh, nasty. The Big Nasty. No, that's that's Stephen Nasty. <laughs> yeah, the Big Nasty Lou. But uh, no, uh, it's coming quick. Racing preview 2020 going to be next week. Daytona's this. Who's going to win Daytona? 
Oof. I don't even know. I haven't even seen anything for speeds or anything. You don't have to see speeds. It's Daytona. Who's going yeah, to Daytona? Yeah, good point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you see all the small teams perform well at Daytona. What do you think? Um, Bush has won everything but. I know. He's never turning into another Earnhardt, isn't he? As far yeah. as winning the 500, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, I think the Toyota's going to be fast. Probably Truex. I think Truex finally won the 500. I think Ryan Blaney. He's. I think Ryan Blaney. He's, so, uh, he's in a good piece of equipment. It's going to be a fun time. We'll obviously have the 500 party at the house and uh, play some games and, you know, some pools, and that's good. That's how you do the pool right this time, Steve. Yeah, I know. You can't do 100 <laughs> squares and put 110 out there. I collected the money and made 10 bucks. But I don't have enough numbers to give away. You know? <laughs> but, uh, no, it was uh, it's fun. It's always fun when we get together. There'll be a bunch of us. And uh, thank you for you coming on the show, Lou. Thank you for having us. Yeah. We made the big announcement this today. Dirty Lou's back. He's head of the beach ridge, so <laughs> Jesus. Cole Watson, he mad now. Uh, he's already mad. <laughs> Calm down, Cole. He's a new guy. So, uh, but nope, it's going to be fun. You'll see Lou at the racing preview show. You won't see his car, but you'll see Lou. We'll be there. Uh, lots of fun and exciting things to do. I know there's a Nelcar meeting at, I think, 2 o'clock on Saturday. So, you know, if you're interested in that series or you are joining that series, you haven't heard about it, uh, go on their Facebook page and, and get all the details. Uh, just lots of things to see and do with the Racing Preview 2020. Buy a chance, take a chance, and win a motor. Then if you win a motor, then you can go buy a race car. And then you can be miserable like the rest of us. <laughs> right? No, we're not miserable. We're just happy. So when they're drawing the late model for that, we head out. And... I don't know. We're going to get them on. After I get my motor away and I'm done, we'll get them on. We'll get... Little Ben Bozowski or Steve Dickey. I will take a ride down. Maybe you and me will take a ride to Hudson some night. There we go. We'll go down to Hudson. We'll do a piece with them right down there on that car, and we'll, we'll show them how to sell some raffle tickets. Yeah. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode. You know, there we Louis go. We're at racing. Jesus. Well, you know, if I win the car, Debbie bought me a ticket for Christmas, so I win the car. I'm going loud with it. All right. I'm starting parking it. Then you can get in and finish it off, Lou. There we go. Finish that off. <laughs> probably 20 other that guys' cars careers. But I uh, know it's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you, Lou. Yeah. Again, looking forward to now the great season of Beach Ridge Racing with the Dirty Lou, the 81, and got to change the number. I have number too long now. I know it. That's how old I'll be. Your stripper will be 81. So i got to find an 81-year-old stripper. If anybody's got one, send that. No, Steve. No, oh, Steve, he said. All right, that's it for this week. We'll see you next time right here on Mainly Motorsports. <laughs>